keep it real with ya. The second scenario is you just didn't know your damn self. Like <laughs> the second scenario where uh, this stuff happens is like you genuinely did not know until you were older that you were in fact asexual. And that's perfectly valid. Like I've said before on these videos, like it's not good education. It's not a lot of good resources out there. It's not a lot of education around what asexuality actually is. So you have a lot of people that are confused about whether or not they are asexual. And for some people, by the time they figure out they're asexual, they're like in their forties. So you may have been in this long time. I remember I saw one time a woman, she was like 52 and she had been married for like 20 years and she had no idea what was wrong with her that her husband was so perfect in all these other ways, but she just wasn't sexually attracted to him. She didn't want to have sex with him. And a lot of people have that story because they just don't know. And if you genuinely do not know if you're asexual or not, you can't come out to your partner in the first you know, a few dates that you're asexual. You just can't, you can't. Logically, those things can't happen. You can't say you're asexual if you don't know. You know what I mean? Now, what I do want us to do as a society, what I do want us to get more comfortable with, because again, you could be allosexual and sex repulsed and have very similar issues. We need to be better at making it okay that someone doesn't want to have sex as a society. The fact that being an adult is somehow synonymous with having lots of sex. Like, you know, obviously like people have sex as teens, but like the idea is like once you're an adult, you know, you can buy condoms, you can buy uh, vibrators, you can buy to all types of toys. Like making a adulthood synonymous with having lots of sex or desiring a lots of sex is so toxic and it's so harmful to people whether you're asexual or not, if you genuinely aren't interested in having sex, that should be okay. Like you should be able to just say, I'm not okay with having sex. You know, whether it's, I'm not okay with having sex to marriage. I'm not okay with having sex until the fifth date. I'm not okay with having sex until I've known you for six months. Um, I'm not okay with having sex until X, Y, Z amount or I'm not okay with having sex ever, you should be able to say that and that be accepted and be okay. You know what I mean? And if you're dating someone and you let them know that you, maybe you have a low libido or whatever, they should be okay with that, you know? Or they can, they can walk away if they want to. Again, it takes two to tango. But people should be more accepting of you saying things like that as opposed to, and this especially happens with, women who get in relationships being coerced and pressured into having sex with their partner because they'll say it because everybody says what you won't do another woman will so you feel like you have to force yourself into these situations in order to keep your partner uh, attention in order for your partner to actually love you and that's so toxic and it's so harmful we need to get better society saying some people just not that into sex they're not i know plenty of straight women who are just like that could take it or leave it you know, and they're still sexually attracted to people. They're still sexually attracted to men, but sex isn't this super amazing, wild thing that they need to do every day. Like, and that's okay. I don't have to dig into that. I don't have to question their sexuality. I don't have to ask them if they're sex repulsed. I don't have to ask them if their hormones need to be checked or if they have a low libido. I don't have to ask any of those questions. You should be able to just say, you know, I only feel like having sex like once a month or once every two months. And that should just be normal. That should just be okay. No one should have to question that or question you or dig into you and, and tell you to go to the doctor or anything like that. And I feel like even if you were asexual, people should have been okay. And you, even if you were asexual and you didn't know, your partner or the people in your immediate vicinity should have been okay with the fact that you just weren't that into sex. You know, like you don't automatically have to be asexual if you're not that into sex. It's not those things don't, you know, mean each other directly, but it's just unfortunate. But like I said at the beginning of, of this part, it's like you can't come out to your partner if you don't even know what you're coming out for. 
The only thing you can do in those situations is have open communication with your partner and let them know that you're just not interested. There are a lot of women that after they have children and they're like consumed with the stress of raising babies and and little humans, they just, they're just not that interested that much. You know what I mean? They go to work, they come home, they deal with the kids. They're not that interested, you know, or they feel like they can't do it because the kids are in the next room and that's all totally valid. But then to have a, have a culture that says you have to do all of this stuff and be super stressed and, and have all of this stuff that affects your ability to even, you know, become aroused and then turn around and make sure that you're always doing something freaky nasty for your husband. Because if you don't, he's going to leave you and your kids and go cheat on you with some other woman who doesn't have kids, who's going to do all the freaky nasty stuff. We, that's, that's such a toxic thing in our culture that we really need to work on because no one should have to feel pressured to have sex in a relationship when they don't want to whether they love the person or not is it that's irrelevant you should not feel pressured to have sex in a relationship when you don't feel like it and if you don't feel like it for several months then you don't feel like it for several months toys exist your partner can satisfy themselves so the last scenario where i see this come up is the people who've listened to me talk about the other scenarios. Um, the people who are upfront and honest about being asexual. Like they tell their they tell the person during the dating phase or they tell them when they decide to form a relationship and the partner's like, cool, gotcha, yes, I'm so okay with this. And they ain't okay with it. Like they are never, like, well, I won't say never, but all these stories that I hear where they're like, I told them up front and they said they were okay with it, usually ends with they were lying, they weren't really okay with it. Or they said they were okay with it and later they changed their mind. Um, what I usually get and what I glean from those type of situations, one, I don't know, I, and I, it's hard for me to speak a lot about women because I've not had a lot of interaction with women in a dating space, so I'm just gonna talk about men for a second. Um, men lie to me all the time. <laughs> they lied about being okay with everything. I had a guy lie to me and say he was cool with me being an atheist when he was Christian. And then later on, he said that he was just hoping that he could convince me and make me come around by dating me. And I was like, that's some bullshit. Um, I've had guys say they're okay with it. Uh, okay with me before I even knew I was asexual. I was open about the fact that I did not want to have sex. And I had guys say that they were cool with it and okay with it. And then later say, um, I thought that you was just waiting until you were comfortable and then we would do it. And I'd be like, no, that's not how it works. <laughs> like, that's not what I said though. Like what I said was, I don't want to do this like ever. I didn't say make me comfortable or make me trust you. Or if we get along better and I like that one, even, one time a guy even told me like, you know, okay, I'll come back in a few years when you're ready. I wasn't saying that I'm not ready right now, but I'll be ready later. <laughs> like, also too, you just going to come back. Like, you're just going to come back five years from now and be like, so you, you, you're down to have sex now? You And I'm like, no. <laughs> and it's funny because this time was almost 10 years ago when I had that conversation, but it's just like that they just they just say that they're okay with stuff in the beginning. They'll say that they're okay with so many things in the beginning as long as it means that they can get the relationship that they want and then become frustrated when they realize you were serious. And it is very very frustrating that people are like that 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 people do that. So, I I have a lot of sympathy for the people who were honest up front and then their partner, man, woman, or whoever was like, yeah, no, I'm totally cool with it. I accept you. I love you. We're in this together. And then later is like, you, but you, you still asexual? You sure? You're still asexual? Nah, I don't, I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. Like, because the idea that I see a lot of times with this is that two things happen. One they have some weird thought in the back of their head, whether you said it or not. Um, and, and maybe sometimes these people do. Maybe sometimes they say stuff like, well, maybe I'm demisexual and once I feel more comfortable that I will. Sometimes people probably do say that. But what I'm thinking is happening in these situations is, one, you told them that you were asexual up front. And in their mind, they heard, I'm not comfortable with sex right now. Or I'm not sexually attracted to you right now 
they heard that. And then as the relationship progressed, they looked up and realized you're still not sexually attracted to me. Like, come on now. Like we're, you know, we've been together for like a year or two years, three years, five years, whatever. You're still not sexually attracted to me. You still are not comfortable with sex. Like what is, you know, like they have this weird thing in their mind that is just going to flip one day. That is just, that as you get more comfortable in a relationship, it will turn into the relationship that they want it to be. And they don't say that out loud, right? They, 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 what they say out loud is I'm totally good with this. I understand. I accept you, blah, 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 blah. But what they're thinking in their back of their mind is I can change you. I can fix you. You know, I just got to love you hard enough. And then, you know, it'll all, it'll all work out. It all like cling together. And then when they see that it doesn't, then they want to leave. <laughs> And, and it's unfortunate. Like I, like I said, I have a lot of sympathy for the asexual person in that way because they were open with their communication and their partner wasn't. The person they were dating wasn't. So now they're invested in a relationship thinking that they're safe and comfortable. And then the partner's like, ah, I'm out. You know, that's really messed up. The other part that I think is also happening in these situations is that they don't fully understand what you mean. Like, they don't fully understand what a relationship with an asexual person looks like.